You don't believe in no fate. Uh, every day digging the grave. Uh, stepping up here with a stace. Uh, city of dreams, city of dreams. Hello and welcome to episode two of Night City Wire. This is the show from us at CD Projekt Red, where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. In today's episode, we're going to be deep diving into Life Pass and showing you a brand new gameplay video, as well as having a chat to Philip from our quest team. Then we're going behind the scenes and taking a look at how refused to bringing the band Samurai to life. And then we're showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. So let's get started. Street Kid, Nomad or Corpo? Which will you pick first? Grew up in Haywood. Whole street was my family. Neighbors helped each other out. Thought nothing of it. I am pleased to see you have not forgotten your roots. Born here, live here, die here. Childhood memories. Hopping buildings. Running away from badges. Iron tasted blood from a split lip. Motherfucker! Got everybody fighting for a slice of the street. Get the fuck out of Vista. If you keep getting jumped, you find some stronger tumors. Do you want to spend the rest of your days blasting scabs? Or become a legend overnight? We have arrived. The Major. Ready to get your cherry bobbed? Yeah, come on! Childhood, I see. Racing my bobber for the first time through the hills. <laughs> oh, and uh, first kiss in the middle of a synth cornfield. We nomads choose who to make our family. A choice forges strong bonds and a higher duty that stands solid as an old oak. My family's in pieces. That's why I'm headed for Night City. Makes you an outcast among outcasts. Miss this, you know? The camaraderie. I know. I saw it in your heart the first time we met. You know what I always liked about nomads? Your taste, no, hunger for freedom. Not easy to come by in Night City. Corpse got their grubby claws and everything. have those reports you asked for. They were supposed to be ready yesterday. The world's going to tear us apart when the word gets around. The world's never going to find out. If I go down, you're going down with me. No, I'm not fucking joking. This isn't a request, V. But no way you're fucked, right? You're the one who fixes other people's shit. If you work in our Arasaka counter intel, you're always fucked. Today, they got you to zero somebody. Tomorrow, they'll get somebody else to zero you. What's the rules, Jack? You wanna be top? Gotta have some skin in the game. Yeah, but you're not on top. The borough Arasaka is. And you're the pendejo who keeps him there. Work for yourself, live for yourself. That's the only way. It is so good to see you again. It's actually been a while since I've had a chance to interview you about cyberpunk. So I think for today, we'll start with a question that everybody wants to know. How does the path you pick affect your time in Night City? It actually affects your time quite a lot throughout the whole game, but let's start at the beginning because basically our game has three different starts depending on your life path. Uh, as an example, if you choose the street kid life path, you have lived most of your time in Night City. 
you know the streets, you know the gangs, you know the slang, you kind of know what's going on in the, let's say, lower life aspects of the city, which can of course give you lots of good opportunities also later on in the game. Uh, but if you start as a nomad, you actually used to be part of a nomad clan and a nomad family, because nomads that roam the deserts around Night City, that we call the Badlands, actually value their family above anything. But for one reason or another, you actually left that family behind, and now the beginning of the game for you will actually be how to get into Night City and how to make a new life there. Then you can also choose to actually be a corpo and choose the corporate life path. And that basically means that you're not at home in the streets of Night City or in the deserts of the Badlands, but actually inside the boardroom, because you rose the corporate ladder of the Arasaka Corporation, which basically gives you the ability to sometimes, you know, read between the lines, read people when they're trying to do business, which of course can give you many nice opportunities later on. So this isn't just about the start of the game. Can you maybe help people understand how this translates into the gameplay? Yeah. So the thing is, we make Cyberpunk a real RPG. And part of that is that you can play your character from the start to the end. And of course, you know, we have these life paths affecting the beginning of the game, but we wanted to make it so you have your life path opportunities throughout the whole game until the, the game is over. And as an example, we do that by giving you additional options in dialogues. So I can give you one specific example. And this is a mission where you have to steal a flathead robot from the Maelstrom gang. Basically, those Maelstromers stole that flathead before from a corporate transport. And the owner of that corporate transport, Meredith Stout, wants you to do something else. And this is an optional objective. And even within that objective, we want to give you some options. So as an example, if you have a corporate life path, you basically know what Meredith Stout is really about. You can read between the lines and you can get some additional options that maybe actually later enable you to do a completely different thing with the Maelstrom gang. And if you're a nomad, you know exactly some more details about how these Maelstromers would have even been able to steal a robot like that from Meredith Stout, who's part of the very powerful Militech Corporation. As a street kid, we as an example don't give you a specific new dialogue option in that dialogue because as a street kid, you do not have a lot of experience dealing with higher up people like Meredith Stout. But we want to give you additional options that fit your life path very well. So later when you actually talk to the Maelstrom gang, one member of the gang offers you some illegal substance but as a street kid, you actually know what this is about. You can talk some shop with him and that might actually make that character like you a little bit more. So Philip, I do have a couple of extra questions for you based on the video we just saw. And the first is about nomads. So the nomad life path, this starts in a place called the Badlands. Is this somewhere you get to visit even if you don't pick nomad to start with? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the thing is, Night City is surrounded by this huge landscape that we call the Badlands. And you can go there whenever you want. So as an example, if you actually do play the Nomad Life Path at the start and you are in the Badlands, you can even see Night City on the horizon. And we want to give you the option later in the game, if you want, you can just take your car and drive out of the city. You can go there whenever you want. Thing is, you might not want to because the Badlands can be a pretty dangerous place at first because time has not been very kind to the Badlands. There have been many wars in the past, there's global warming, so most people that do live out there don't really have another choice about it or are nomads that love this life and are all about it and are very battle-hardened. We of course also want to tell their stories because we want to tell many many different stories throughout the cyberpunk genre which means that you will also find missions that lead you out in the badlands or where you deal with the people living there. So Philip, can you tell us a little bit more about the character Padre? He's the guy we see giving his business card to Street Kid V in the video. Who is this man? Yeah, so Padre is actually one of the fixers in Night City. And fixers are people that work as intermediaries. So if someone who has a lot of money needs a problem solved, they go to a fixer. And a fixer then finds people who can solve that problem. And these people are people like you, V, cyberpunks. Fixers are very territorial, so Padre specifically works from Haywood, which is where you as a street kid grew up in, so you already know him. You might have already seen another one of our fixers, who is called Dexter Deshawn, and he works in a different part of the city. 
So specifically Padre, you might know him as a street kid, but even if you played other life paths, you might sooner or later meet him because he's operating in Haywood, which is a pretty big place with many good jobs. So if you want to make some cash there, you will sooner or later deal with Padre. Philip, thank you so much for joining us. Now on my first playthrough, pretty sure I'm going to be picking Nomad. But for those watching, we would love to know what you'll be picking. So have a think about it and send us a tweet. Don't forget that later in this episode, we're going to be showing you another new gameplay video and having a chat to Pavel, our senior gameplay designer, about just some of the tools of destruction that will be at your disposal in Night City. But before that, let's talk about music because music plays a huge part in bringing Night City to life. Now in future episodes, we're going to talk about things like radio stations and even the original score. But today, we're going to take a look behind the scenes at how refused to bringing Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai, to life. I wouldn't write these lyrics for myself. In our willing, yes to be so it's kind of interesting to, to get into like the mindset of who is this character and what would they write about, or what, what, what's their agenda. It's interesting to, to try to like catch a language that, that's his and try to catch a language that's like a part of this game. There is a reason why we're here. It was Piotr maybe who was a fan of the band. He knew Refuse and he knew my voice and he said, oh, that's a perfect voice for, for Johnny. And that they wanted, I guess, a sound that was a bit contemporary from when it's when Johnny's supposed to have had the band, because he's sort of like an anti-establishment kind of guy. Gonna drag a corporal rat on stage, make him kneel, douse him with gas, and light him up. So of course there are things that you can relate to, and like just like this outcast and this rebel that's fighting against like the, the corporals, and that's definitely something that's been a part of my life and a part of the fuse life. We came out of the punk rock scene of uh, northern Sweden. He's like the future version of us. You know? So I, I think it makes sense. I think it totally makes sense for us to be here making these songs about him or for him. You know? So it's pretty cool. Yeah. No, 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 no trills. But yeah, but like wide vibrato. And then I mean, just sort of feel, I mean, yeah. slowly build, sort of intensity. We don't have a different mode than just going all in. So we're, we really work on these songs, trying to make them as good as possible. But then they're not actually our songs. It's interesting as, as a musician to play another musician, because that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, we're not here as Refuse, we're here as Samurai. And I'm here with Johnny <laughs> Silverman, you know? So it's like the voice we're representing here is someone else. We'll never fade away! It's uh, been a mind fuck. I mean, the shouting in itself is just like second nature to me because I've been, I've been doing this for a very long time. But then when someone comes in and says, I'm happy with everything except for Azza Lim. Again, it's Azza. 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 Okay. I think we had it earlier, but let's do one more. Okay. The shouting's great, but think of that accent. Or think of that like enunciation. It's a bit weird because it is a, it's a very different way of singing when, you, when you're screaming like that and it's hard to sort of... Swallowing some syllables there. Adjust your accent. Oh yeah, just try it again. So it's, it's been a bit kind of frustrating. <laughs> it, it wasn't... It wasn't... It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. 
But I mean, I get it. I mean, we, we have to maintain the illusion that this character that's a character of the game also is, is me, like when I'm singing it. So it makes sense. But yeah, it's, it's a bit different to have someone telling you exactly how to announce these things. Because I'm not used to, usually people are just like, give me a thumbs up and then like, you know, you, you think the things like the rhythm and you think about the pitch and you think about all these things. But then someone comes in and like, that word sounded weird. I'm like, what? No, it's, it's how I sing. But so it's, it's been a very, uh, yeah, a bit painful <laughs> at times. But it's all right. See this song, I'm chipping in. Roll the bones, I'm chipping in. Bet that cone, I'm chipping in. May have clouds. It's a very interesting thing to be part of. As, as a person that's not a gamer, I don't think I fully understand the impact that this might have. If people like these songs and if people are excited, that, then that's going to be great. I mean, we, we are spending a lot of time trying to get this right, trying to get it to sound like, you know, like samurai would sound, you know, so it, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a very different way of, uh, of, uh, of, of making music, actually. You can already find three Samurai tracks available on streaming services, Chiffin' In, Never Fade Away, and The Ballad of Buck Gravers. But we're excited to announce a fourth new song called A Like Supreme, which is coming to streaming services today. That means you can check it out once the show is over. Don't forget that if you're tuning in late, or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channel soon. Next up, Pavel and I are going to introduce you to some creative ways that you can solve problems in Night City. AV, hey I have a job for you. A client of mine is making an arms deal. He needs protection. It could get hot, very hot. The gun dealers on Maelstrom. Alas, nothing ever transpires as planned with them. You better gear up for this. Are you willing? Yeah, I'm in. Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. Now, there was an awful lot in that video, right? Because it's more than just guns. Absolutely. We have melee weapons, we have ranged weapons, we have cyberware, we have offensive cyberware, defensive cyberware, armor. We could talk for hours and hours about this stuff. I think just for today's episode, we should keep it simple and let's just talk about guns. Can you tell us uh, the different types of guns that will be in the game? So we have three distinct types of guns in our game. We have power weapons, we have tech weapons, and we have smart weapons. Now, power weapons are the most similar to contemporary weapons. 
One thing they can do, which normal weapons cannot, is ricochet bullets off of surfaces. So you can hit somebody hiding behind cover or hiding behind a wall. Now, tech weapons, on the other hand, use electromagnetic power to propel a fully metal projectile to extreme velocities. What that allows them to do is to punch through cover or punch through walls to hit somebody who's not even aware that you're there. Smart weapons use guided missile technology to actually track targets in real time. So you can hit somebody who's dodging, running away from you, or you can hit somebody who's hiding behind cover. So Pavel, Cyberpunk doesn't just contain FPS elements, right? it's also a fully-fledged RPG. So can you tell us how you guys approached introducing those RPG elements into gunplay? So I can tell you one thing, Holly, it wasn't easy to merge those two elements <laughs> together. Now, uh, we've spent a considerable amount of time merging the RPG and FPP side of our game. What the player will experience is that V changes from a small-time mercenary to a legend in the world of Night City. V becomes more and more proficient in using weapons as the game progresses. So they will see that reload times become shorter, uh, the accuracy of your weapons grows, uh, you will have faster aiming time, you will move faster with your weapons, everything becomes more in your control and that gives you more opportunities to defeat the biggest encounters that we've designed for you. So I have prepared a few extra questions for you, Pavel, if you're feeling up to it. Of course. Okay, well the first is going to be, how do you find more weapons in Night City? Like, where will players be looking for them? So I expect the players to look everywhere for new and exciting weapons. You can, of course, buy weapons at vendor shops and they will house an entire catalogue of weaponry that you can get. However, the best weapons that you can find will be taken from enemies or loot caches that we have everywhere in Night City. The weapons rarities range from common through uncommon up to rare and then legendary. And as they go in rarity, they actually climb in power. However, legendary weapons are very specific in such a way that they possess unique abilities that you will find on no other weapons in the game. The players will actually need to make some tough choices to find some legendary weapons because maybe they need to choose whether to kill a person who holds the legendary weapons that they want or to spare them because they like them as a character. So next question, let's talk about weapon modifications. What mods can people give to their weapons in Night City? So we have two types of modifications in the game. One of them would be modifications that we call attachments. So these would be scopes and silencers, and you can see them actually being attached to your weapon as you're playing the game. They give you statistics advantage and they give you more opportunities in gameplay. The other part of mods would be software mods. Now these are basically small chips that you install in, the, in your weapon, and they actually change the statistics of the gun. They can give you damage, they can give you accuracy, or they can give you more fire rate. Some of those mods actually change the gunplay on a more fundamental level, so they can give you non-lethal rounds, biochemical rounds, to tear through that armor even faster. So I suppose for my final question, uh, why don't you tell us about your favorite weapon then? Which is your favorite weapon so far in Night City? Oh, there are so many weapons that it's hard to choose just one but I can mention some manufacturers with their weapons that I absolutely adore. The first manufacturer would be Tsunami Defense Systems, who produces the sniper rifle Nekomata. That's a tech sniper rifle. That means that it can pierce through walls, so it can actually hit somebody who's hiding behind cover or who doesn't even know you're there. Of course, I also like a close quarters approach, and what that needs is a shotgun. One of the shotguns that we have in the game is Budget Arms Carnage. Now, that thing is cast from pure steel and it weighs a ton. However, you can cut a person clean in half with it. Another shotgun that I absolutely love, it's for a more refined approach, I would say, is a smart shotgun, Kang Tao Zhuo. That thing has eight barrels and that means it can track eight targets independently. Now, killing an entire room was never simpler. Uh, Pavel, thank you so much for joining me. 
Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm actually pretty interested to see what kind of weapons people discover when they uh, play cyberpunk for themselves. Before we end episode two, this is a reminder that those who wish to dive deeper into a lore can now pick up the world of Cyberpunk 2077. This is a brand new book created in collaboration with Dark Horse Books that will give you an extensive look at what makes Night City tick before jumping into the game this November. That is it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels shortly. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll be back with Night City Wire episode three soon.